for today's headlines. Enough rise until next year, says Senator Amy Marcus. PUV drivers reminded of effectivity of fair hikes. Only three COVID deaths a day in September, says the DOH. DOH government target 50% booster coverage, just impossible. And Vong Navarro transferred to NBI detention. And Habaga to bring rains over PH. Good evening. Today is Tuesday, September 20. I am Vernon Velasco. And this is Tribune News on Q. Here are the stories for this evening. The country's rice supply is seen to surpass consumer demand and there is no reason for the Department of Agriculture to issue import clearances. Senator Aimee Marcos, in a statement on Tuesday, said, based on the data she gathered, no rice importation will happen until next year. Marcos said that the projected 5.13 million metric tons of locally grown rice in the third quarter is expected to exceed the domestic demand of 3.7 million metric tons. The supply will also provide a buffer stock of 1.43 million metric tons by the end of the month. In the fourth quarter, the local rice supply may reach 6.24 million metric tons against the demand of 4.02 million metric tons, which will mean another 2.22 million metric tons of buffer stock by the end of 2022. The LTFRB on Tuesday reminded drivers and PUV operators to follow its guidelines on the implementation of the fare increase or face fines and other penalties. The LTFRB said the fare increase for jeepneys, buses, Taxis, ride healing services like Rabin and Cas will all be effective on October 3. The LTFRB said that PUV drivers and operators cannot ask for a higher fare without a fare matrix guide. It ordered PUV operators and drivers to install an updated fare matrix or guide in their vehicles that should be immediately visible to the passengers. Those who charge passengers the increased fare before the said date face a 5,000 peso fine for a first offense. 10,000 for a second offense, and 15,000 plus cancellation of their certificate of public convenience for a third offense. The Philippines has recorded an average of only three COVID deaths per day this month. Lower than the 17 fatalities daily count in August, a health official said on Tuesday. DOH officer in charge Maria Rosario Verjaira said that the current data may still show 200 confirmed deaths per day due to delay in reporting. While the country's COVID deaths remain low, Verhaira said that the DOH does not want any fatality due to the infection to happen as the agency tries to prevent deaths and severe and critical cases through vaccination. Citing data from Google COVID Mobility Trends, Verhaira said that there was an increase in cases due to more people going out as various sectors like face-to-face -face classes have reopened. Tribune News on Q will be back after these reminders. Magandang araw mga katribu! Narito na ang mga makakasama nyo tuwing umaga sa programang Gising Na. Roy Pelovelo, Comfy Manalo, Vernon Velasco, Kim Sancha at Chirk Balagtas. Abangan ang programang Gising Na sa Facebook page ng Daily Tribune. Ilabas na ang mainit na kape at samahan kami sa inyong pag-almusal mga katribu. Sama-sama natin alamin ang mga natatawag istorya sa mga latest na kaganapan sa loob at labas ng bansa. Aaring nyo rin ibahagi sa amin ang inyong opinion via Daily Tribune Facebook page at Tribune Now sa YouTube. Makichika na rin sa latest showbiz happenings mga katribu. Kaya naman, pagsama-sama po tayo sa Gising Na! The DOH on Tuesday said that the 50% booster coverage set by the President Marcus Jr. for his first 100 days in office is just impossible to reach. In a media briefing, Health OIC Maria Verjaires said that since the launch of the Pinas Lakas COVID vaccination program last July, the government was able to inoculate 2.7 million first booster shots or equivalent to 11.3% of the total target. To recall, Marcos earlier announced that his administration 
is aiming to achieve a 50% first booster coverage nationwide or 23 million individuals up for booster uptake by the end of his first 100 days in office on October 8. The official said that they had already informed Marcos regarding the low booster uptake and said that the agency will revise the initial target to reach it at least 30% of the target of 23 million. Embattled actor and TV host Vong Navarro has been transferred to the detention center of the NBI in Manila after a Taguig court ordered his arrest for rape. A warrant for Navarro's arrest was issued Monday, Monday by Taguig City Regional Trial Court Branch 69, presiding Judge Laura Lee Datahan. The rape charge is non-bailable, the magistrate said in her order. Model Denise Corneo sued Navarro for acts of lasciviousness and rape, which allegedly happened separately in January 2014. His counsel, Alma Malonga, said they will be filing pleadings before the Court of Appeals and the Taguig RTC. Pag-asa on Tuesday said the southwest monsoon will bring rains over central and southern Luzon and the Visayas. In its latest weather bulletin, Pagasa said there are no active warnings of weather disturbances like tropical cyclones, storm surge, flood thunderstorms, and rainfall at glance within the Philippine area of responsibility. However, light to moderate at times, heavy rains will prevail over Metro Manila, Zambales, Bataan, Calabarzon, Bicol Region, the Two Mindoros, Marinduque, Romblon, and Northern Palawan including in Cuyo and Calamian Islands. Scattered rain showers and thunderstorms are expected in Mimaropa, Summer Provinces, and Western Visayas. These weather conditions may cause scattered flooding and rain-induced landslides. That wraps up these stories tonight. Catch us again tomorrow on Only Here at Daily Tribune's Facebook page. Again, this is Vernon Velasco and you are watching Tri Tribune News on Q. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay home. Good night. God bless us all. Catch the latest news on our website tribune.net.ph Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Tribune Now. Download the Daily Tribune app on Apple Store for iOS and Google Play for Android to get the latest and most comprehensive news online. Daily Tribune invites you to join its vibrant community, Katribu, to get updates on the hottest news on politics, business, sports, lifestyle, and entertainment. Emoticons of the Tribune mascot, Tarsito, are available on our community Viber. We would like to thank the following. Araneta, Pag-ibig, SM Supermall, Veteran, Divina Law Offices, ICTSI, Xlog, Globe, Kia, PLDT, Cherry, Tanawan, Prime Homes, RLC, Pure Gold, Peralco, and SM Retail.